www.simonwoodhead.com. Uh, I have a couple of Sauvignon Blancs in front of me from opposite sides of the world. Um, one from Marlborough in New Zealand, I'm doing that one second because it's got a little bit of oak on there. Uh, first one is from the South of France, uh, not quite sure where in the South of France. Uh, Paydoc, uh, so it could, well, Paydoc uh, covers a multitude of, uh, not multitude of sins, but multitude of, uh, of parts of southern France. Uh, but I don't think there's any oak on here. Uh, so it's a 2015 Carmel uh, et Joseph Villa Blanche Sauvignon Blanc. Give it a whirl. Not giving too much away when I, when I smell it. If I really give it a, a good swirl, I get uh, little bits of lemon, a uh, little bits of something fatter, maybe a bit of, bit of guava, but um, um, I've only just un, uh, undone the screw cap. It, uh, screw cap. Uh, it may but just be that it needs a little bit more time to uh, come out of its shell, so I'll have another swirl before I taste it. And it's a funny wine because uh, I, I was talking about those two elements, the citrus and the, the richer thing, and it, feel, it, it feels like those two bits, uh, like, as if someone's picked a very ripe bit and picked a very a slightly underripe bit to balance it. And at the moment the two are just about getting on together. I, I've got a feeling that um, maybe as the wine opens up in the glass they'll, they'll all meld together more. Uh, so there's this sweet, um, richer guava, maybe a little bit of Victoria Plum in there, alongside this Estonia uh, citrus element. Um, I like it, uh, but um, I, it, yes, it feels, it feels like work in progress. Okay, wine number two. Uh, this is The Paper Nautilus um, from uh, Nautilus Winery um, in, in Marlborough. I've been there a long, long time. Um, and um, The Paper Nautilus Sauvignon Blanc, small batch, innovative wine, released only in exceptionally, exceptional years, uh, made from hand-picked estate-grown grapes, fermented in a single seasoned French oak cuve. So let's give it a whirl and see um, what all that means. Well, it's got that ripe, rich edge of uh, Sauvignon tinged with this smokiness that, uh, that, that, that comes from the, the oak ageing. It feels like it's, yes, it's, I'm not sure what the alcohol will be, 13.5%. So not, I mean, there's lots of, um, of New Zealand Sauvignons that are, that are around there. Uh, there's this edge of um, gooseberry, uh, maybe a little bit of the asparagus in there. Uh, but there's this um, slightly herby character and this, uh, this smokiness from, uh, uh, from the oak ageing. Maybe a little bit of uh, flint character coming through as well. You come to taste it, and um, I've taken I've taken it out of um, a reasonably cool cellar, but it's a warm day here, so it feels like it's it's warming up quite a lot. And uh, what I notice uh, coming through here is this um, uh, really quite rich guava pear. I was talking about guava on the previous one, uh, but the, the, the here there is this tro may, yeah this tropical maybe a bit of passion fruit in there too. And uh, the, that smokiness of the oak, I was slightly disturbed, well not disturbed, but I, I was wondering whether the oak would be front and centre and uh, in the hope that over time it would, uh, it would recede into, into the background. It just says fer fermented in, in an oak cube. It doesn't, I'm, I'll probably be able to find details about how long it's been in there. But uh, it hasn't picked up too much of an oak imprint, uh, apart from giving this smokiness uh, and it feels like a more developed style than a uh, than you'd expect from a a well we're we're, we're in uh, end of July 2016 here so it's uh, just over yeah you know, a year and a third old and um, and it feels more developed uh, more open and um, yeah more developed fruit flavours less of the crispness that uh, an unoaked Sauvignon would have but more extra layers uh, is that good. Uh, is it better or is it worse? I think that you'll find some people who prefer the unoaked style. Uh, personally, I think it's it's a, it's a it's just another facet, uh, and I think they've handled it really well. They've not, what they've not got is overripe fruit, and then thought, right, okay, we'll give, give it the overripe fruit. Let's smother it in oak. There's still some crispness there. There's this nice gentle development. Um, one of those wines that I would be very interested to see what happens to it uh, with a further time in bottle. Um, no, no problem opening it and drinking it now. As I said, there's that oak smell, but it doesn't feel like there's any oak flavours that need to, uh, uh, need to resolve themselves. But um, pretty good wine. And uh, yes, by, my favourite of the two by quite a bit. But, but the first one wasn't bad either.